All right, today I am going to be trying something new. I'm going to be using a split cup that, uh, that was sent to me from some friends. They have a, um, an Etsy shop. I will put the link in the description box. And uh, I'm gonna be doing a straight pour. And so I'm gonna put a different color in each channel. The, the purple that I have here, which is a mixture of the dioxazine purple from Basics with just a touch of titanium white to brighten it up just a hair because it does dry almost black. So this will brighten it up just a bit and then when it dries it looks more purple it'll be a deep purple but not such a deep purple so I'll have the base color well I'll put a base coat down and then I'm going to have my background color which is the purple in each cup and then I will add my other colors to each cup so we have a rainbow going today it is pride month so I love rainbows. I love people who fly the rainbow flags and anything that has to do with rainbows because they're beautiful. And that's what we're doing. So we have Deco Art Americana Decor Metallics in Deep Sapphire, Emerald, Berry. This is the matte metallics in gold, and then the regular metallics in copper. These paints have been mixed one part paint to two parts Floetrol. That mixture is then thinned with my concoction of 90% water and 10% Floetrol. So you mix two parts Floetrol to one part paint, and then you add the 90-10 concoction to get the consistency that you want. I am doing a two on my consistency scale today. And if you can see, it makes a mound, but it disappears quickly. A one would be, it does not make a mound at all. Normally in a straight pour, I would even go as thin as a one except I'm using metallics and the metallics have mica in them which makes them appear thicker so just because it appears thick it may actually still be pretty thin as far as your binders go so you don't want to go too thin or you might wind up with just a sheen of color across your painting which is not a bad thing in if you're trying to go for a sky, if you're trying to do like a cloud pour, like legitimate clouds for a landscape, if you add silver in there, it just adds like, you know, off in the distance, you see a haze in the horizon, it'll break up and it'll look like that haze, nifty stuff. I need to do another one of those again soon. Before we get started, have you seen the Fluid Art Inspiration Cards? If you have, you can fast forward about a minute. If you have not, what we have are 52 cards there are 42 technique cards, and oh, look at that. Boom, right on the landscape with that nice silvery sky that I told you about. Uh, so there's 42 technique cards. Each technique card has an associated video here on the YouTube. Your picture that tells you what the technique is. We have a little box here that has some tips for that particular technique and a color palette here at the bottom associated with this particular one. And then these two boxes can be used together as the basis of a two color pour or palette or to add other colors to it. There are also eight bonus color palette cards. Each one has five color palettes. Choose all of the colors or just use some of the colors. And you can mix and match the color palettes with the techniques and you have hundreds of thousands of combinations tried to do the math and I started smelling bacon so I gave up. If somebody wants to do that math for me, go on and let me know. 
These are available at my website, ginadeluca.net. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put some paint in this cup. And I, I don't want to put too much down for my base coat and then not have enough for my cup. So I usually do the cup first. If I drip on the canvas, it's okay. This color is going to be flooding it anyway. I'm just going to make sure these are all even. to the side and I will lay down this base coat. It just helps your paint to slide around easier. I just realized that I usually paint my edges first and I didn't this time. What a naughty, naughty girl. Okay, my power went out and came back on. Thankfully, uh, my base coat is down. Let me hurry up and do this before it turns off on me again. This has been happening a lot lately and has really been cramping my style. I don't want to turn on my computer because, you know, bad things happen <laughs> to your computer when the power suddenly shuts off. Okay, I'm going to put in my cell making colors now. And I'm going to try to pour from a pie. This is going to be a challenge for sure. Keeping them all in the right compartment. These are very full cups. I hope that these cell makers sink enough. All right, let's make a mess, shall we? I'm probably going to make this a bit of a moving pour. I guess we're going to see how this comes out. That is not coming out how I expected it. It is running down the side of the cup. We are just going to go with this because that's what we do. We're artists. 
You deal with the cards you're dealt. Play the card you're dealt. Is that what it is? Okay. Well, it's interesting. We'll see what happens. Going to give this a quick torch because this does create a lot of bubbles, this technique. Alrighty. see what happens. How do I want to do this? Let me think about this for a second. This is really beautiful here. The way this came out, like feathery. I do want to make sure that I have some of every color on here. I don't want to tilt all of the green off accidentally. I want to make sure that I can still get everything in here. So, uh, all right, I'm going to do this corner first. You know what? I'm getting a corner catcher. Okay, not ideal. I was in a hurry. I, I like to use the corrugated cardboard, but uh, this is what it is. Looks like my green is safe. Hope some of that gold pops back up. Bringing it back to the center. Actually, I'm going to hit this side first. And now I'm just going to kind of move this back and forth and stretch it, try to get some more of that gold to pop up. Stretching brings out those cells.
Now I'm going to stretch the other direction and come back. Okay, I'm gonna let this sit and see what happens. I think hopefully I'll get some more cells popping up, but uh, I'm gonna let this sit and I will bring you in for a close up back in a few. Okay, here it is. I did get a few more cells popping up, but I still have plenty of negative space there, which I am good with. I do like to have some negative space. The Generally, if I put all of these paints in a straight pour, they will blend and get these, you know, cool multicolored cells. Kind of like what happened right there. You'll get a lot of that, which I love, absolutely love that but i wanted these cells to kind of maintain their integrity color wise i wanted them to be bold and so i thought that using that chambered cup would do the trick and it did i have nice big patches of color where i wanted them I was able to get a decent amount of control. There are a few like smaller cells that are kind of hard to see. That did pop up around. Look at that green. Oh gosh, I love that green. It just glows. Yeah. So there that is. Quite pleased with how this turned out. And while I'm here, I might as well show you some dried results. Okay, here are the dried uh, test pieces from the Hippie Crafter uh, Ready to Pour paints. And you can see it really has a lovely finish. This is not varnished. This is just how it dries. And it's not, it's not very sticky for how shiny it is. Surprising. This was the uh, flip cup with silicone. And it's kind of cool how the, it looks different from different angles because of those metallics. It's like certain directions the white shows up more and others the gold. It's a really cool piece. That lacy effect, or I should say chiffon. Groovy. And then here is the straight pour. Didn't really do what straight pours typically do. Came out cool nonetheless. It looks like a drip in a pond to me, so I don't know. I may add something to this, some kind of embellishment. But yeah, overall, I am uh, pretty pleased with how these paints worked out. They held up well. The sides. Wasn't really much happening on the sides to begin with on these. But there is coverage on the side. Some, some pre-mixed pouring paints do not give you coverage on the sides. And this holds up great. Really well. And if it doesn't hold up on the sides, then it's not really meant for pouring to me. Because, I mean, that's 
kind of part of it is that you have cool stuff happening on the sides. You gotta have something on the sides. So there you have it. All right, well, I hope you learned something. I sure did. I always like trying out a new technique. And uh, if you enjoyed it, please do like and share and subscribe. If you have not already subscribed, oh, look at that bling. I have lots of cool ideas for paintings to come. So do click that subscribe button and make sure that you hit the bell so that you get notifications because YouTube changed something and now you don't get the notifications unless you click the bell. Do check out the description box below for links to my PayPal tip jar if you feel so inclined. The link to my Amazon store where anything that you purchase off the entire site of Amazon, I will receive a small commission of at no additional cost to you. Also on the description box, you will find the link to my website, GinaDeLuca.net, where you can find my art and music and the Fluid Art Inspiration cards for sale and music for download. And also in the description box, you will find the link to our Facebook group. Go make some art. Join us there. Post your masterpieces. Ask your questions. Get some inspiration. We have fun there. All right, y'all. That is it for today. I hope you enjoyed. And I hope you have a beautiful day. Now go make some art.